Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 3 says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Shalom, or give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, by Shem Kadash, Barak Thumb. Say call halal to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Uh, double honest to our apostles, our elders who rule well. Also bl say bless the salutations to your brothers out there teaching and enduring truth and sincerity. Um, this lesson, or this this verse was brought out because right now we're in a year of hastening in the day. All right, for one, that's for starters. For two, um, we're in we're in high time to wake out of sleep. All right, as the scripture said, as now now it's a uh, high time to wake out of sleep. Why is it telling us it's high time to wake out of sleep? Because these prophecies are coming to pass, and you have you really don't. I can't even say the prophecies coming to pass because they are coming to pass, but that's not the real reason at this time. We're supposed to be really prepared at this time because waking out of sleep is gathering your oil up. Look, get get the work. You know what I'm saying? Get on get on a good foot and gather your oil. Because right now, gathering your oil, you, you, you know, you should be almost finished up, if not finished, gathering your oil. Because now these, these prophecies are about to start unfolding. You know, um, you ever watch those cook shows and they pretty much making a meal, they tell you what they're going to do, and then they got like a short amount of time, but when that clock start running, you know, they, they're pretty much a real good cook is going to cook the hardest and the thing that takes the longest first and then you know be ready with a little shit at the end so i say that to say that's how us investing in our spirits to where you know there's things that take time to grow with all right there's things that take time and if you think because you see a prophecy come to pass that you're going to be able to just hop up and increase and the main thing that takes time is faith all right. It takes it takes a lot of time to be seasoned with faith. As the apostle say, you can't go to the store and buy faith. Um, but you can increase in faith based off of what experience. So by you waiting the last minute, those are those are so many opportunities to increase in experience to strengthen your faith. OK, so uh, uh, that's why I said at the in the beginning that. You know, gathering your oil is almost passe because you really don't have time to work on certain things. All right. As as it says in second Ezra, those times when he when when Ezra's asked about, you know, a uh, uh, lot plan praying for Sodom for the Sodomites or I believe Abraham, you know, uh, Moses prayed for this person. And the angel said those times were for those times. This time when a it, it's, it's a short time. OK, so we're in that short time. All right to where you don't have the time to uh, um, make as many mistakes as you would have as uh, other people would have got off on, you know what I'm saying? Or be on a certain level coming in the truth or being in the truth. Hey, we not, you know, we're not on that level of just letting anybody in at this point, how it used to be. Right? If it, and, and not really at all. I just didn't want to say it, but at all. You know? But just to put it out there, that's what it is. And we, you know, we keeping it tight knit because we're at the end of this thing. All right. I ain't saying that we're high and mighty to the point we don't accept people. It's just at that point, hey, we'll we'll teach you, but you do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? You set it up. Because at the end of the day, if you're doing the will of the Lord, you're doing the will of the Lord. Now getting back to the precept, it says being uh don't let the incredulity incredulities of them trouble thee. Right? It says, fear not, uh, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulities of them trouble thee that speak against thee. And this is directly addressing all the false prophets that are in high seats, such as Nate, Yohanna, uh, anybody that speak against the gospel. And this is the manifestation of it because uh, really it's the manifestation of who's right and who was wrong. Okay. Who the Lord was dealing with and who he wasn't dealing with Because the person that was right is who the Lord was dealing with Because the scripture says uh, Of a prophet, a prophet prophesy And it don't come to pass And you shouldn't fear that prophet But then here it says Fear not the imaginations of them that trouble thee Or the incredulities And what incredulities go back to Pretty much trying to destroy your credibility Alright At any chance They've been calling us bumites 
they've been saying, you know, the 2020, uh, uh, 2000 profits, uh, you know, 2010, um, our apostles do this, they do that. Uh, they're the angry camp. They want to fight. They want to, you know, and that's ain't nothing. But at the end of the day, regardless of how a person say it, they didn't directly try to bring, try to take away our credibility, but they did it in a way. And it came out, Nate's one of them, that they did it in a way of creating fake accounts. Um, when it's, I'm specifically talking about Nate's camp, they, they put up fake accounts. They put up things to bait brothers in. They put fake news out there to bait them in to turn around and retract it and to prove that that was untrue. Just to do what? Break the credibility of the prophets. That's very demonic. If something, if someone says something someone says is right, then that's what it is. Regardless of who said it. Now, if you got a problem with somebody to the point you're willing to distort the truth that they bring out just to to tickle your own fancy to make you feel good to make you feel vindicated then the lord's going to deal with you because you're no longer dealing with that person you're dealing with the the job that the lord assigned them to okay and and, and as yahweh shai said his meat is to do the will of him that sent me or, or that sent him and our meat is to do the will that the, the lord sent us regardless of the wrong and right that we do the most important thing is to do the will of the Lord. All right. Mercy, mercy will take care of the rest. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that you have the ability to do what you want. You know, it says, uh, uh, the, do you put, put aside the law because of grace? God forbid. Right. So you still keep the law, but your worst mistake is, doesn't define you as long as you don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit or take the RFID chip because that's irreversible. And again, Let's get to that, the RFID chip. So many camps out there, yeah, they uh, are bringing incredulity saying, well, we're conspiracy theorists. That's a that's a, a statement of somebody trying to bring incredulity because they want, when you, when you conceive that, oh, we're conspiracy theorists, you're basically saying that anything we say, we just winging it and going out on a whim, all right? Everything that we put out there is prophetically uh, is biblically prophetic all right if somebody is, is beefing overseas and it's something that's relatable to nation against nation we're going to put out there wars and rumors of wars we're going to put it out there does it mean everything is 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 100 percent fact no because it's wars and rumors of wars and what are we supposed to do you know what i'm saying we're going to put out the information through our due diligence that matches up with the prophecies, man, because we're occupied in the prophecies. But these people that always want to try to put up a narrative and you got to watch these people because at the end of the day, when you listen to them, you got to ask yourself, all right, now that I listen to you, what now? What's what's my end result to me? And the end result, nine times out of 10, is going to result into you not believing in the gospel anymore or not having that diligence to get the hell up out of here. You gonna want to build an Israelite camp or an Israelite re, re, uh, retirement facility and uh, factories and you know that's not the mindset. Scripture says hasten in the day, man. All right, not only in a year hasten in the day, but you're supposed to hasten. Period, man. All right, it's just the spirit is attached to this year. Look at this year. Everybody's dying. Everybody's uh, losing. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just regular people. Joe Smoe's dying. People that that two thirds consider as idols and things like that, man. Things are happening. Things are manifesting and changing. So you should be prepared for the change. You should be ready. Okay. He said though, Yahweh, Yahweh, why Yahweh shy? Said in Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, uh, and also in, in uh, uh, I believe the sixth or the eighth chapter, he said, you know, to watch, man. He said, the days are at hand. Watch. You know? And that's what I, we are supposed to do. We're supposed to be watching. If you're watching, then you'll know what time it is. All right? As the scriptures say, you know, when the east wind bloweth, you know that rain's going to come, right? You like, you see the cloud, you see, you know that rain's going to come. So you know these things are, are, are at the, uh, you know we're at the door, man. All right? And, and, 
here it is. You got people that are out there that are that are in prominent positions within Israel, whether they're righteous or wicked, they're in a prominent position. And there's people out there that are in those positions that are specifically trying to bring incredulities to the prophets for per personal reasons. Whether you don't like a person, you don't like how we teach, or you don't like how a person teaches, you out here with a whole vendetta against a man for doing the Lord's work. Maybe because they called you out, you know, you on some um, hair rod shit against John the Baptist. A lot of you, a lot of you guys, you know, and the Lord's going to require that at your hands. I don't care. As the scriptures say, buy not one sin upon another saying that the most high look at the multitude of my oblations. Whether you guys are right in what you do, you get kudos for that. You know what I'm saying? You get you get kudos for what you do right and you get respect for what you do right because it's all about the Lord's will. If you're doing right in the Lord's and what, what the Lord say that we're supposed to do and you do that, you get respect for that. You get kudos for that. But what you do that's wrong, breaking down an RFID chip wrong, whether you do it correctly or incorrectly, I mean, uh, whether in a good spirit and a bad spirit where you don't know no better and you don't know it, or whether you use corrected and then you want to go on an onslaught or trying to prove like Yohanna tries his best to prove in any way that Apostle Tahar on from the apostles on down are wrong. They don't they're not even trying to break the chip down. They just want to prove the apostle wrong because nobody wants to get under General Yohanna. You know, Nate and them, they specifically do things because of how the apostles do things. The Lord is gonna require that at all you all you guys hand, man. Okay? It's like it's like I had to handle something, but yeah, um the Lord's gonna require this at our hands, anybody's hands. We're gonna re be rewarded for our good and our evil, man. Alright? And as as the brother said, man, you know, we're under grace right now, so you don't wanna add more depth to your depth, man. You don't know how much, you know, loan forgiveness that you have to add on to your debt, man. All right. What the scripture say of man that that uh touch a dead body and wash his hands, touch a dead body again with a veil of his washing. Why are you gonna use, you know, live in grace and then do things to pretty much dirty yourself up again? Underneath that grace, man. You don't know how much grace you get. All right. But some people are blinded by their positions, you know, such as Johanna. He's, he's blinded. I am the command in general. That type of pride blinds him. Nate, Nate's pride is the same thing. Popularity. They got the 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 those the appearance of a, the largest camp. They're organized. They're the blue collar looking. Can't say the blue collar. Well, you know the silver fork and spoon type of Israelites, where or they're, they're the clean cut guys. You know, but at the end of the day, wrong is wrong. Lord ain't looking at that. Man looks at that. Man is wooed by, you know, oh they all in purple and gold and they're marching and singing the same thing. The Lord ain't looking at numbers. The Lord ain't never dealt with numbers. All right. So regardless of what you what you guys do, man, for the brothers that's within the know, that are just coming up, man, don't don't. Don't be wavered by the incredulities, the incredulities of these guys, man. You know, because they're they're pretty much prepackaged GMS in a certain light to where, at the end of the day, people don't want to listen, and we're not doing nothing but preaching the gospel. Which ultimately, you're doing what? You're stopping people from listening to the words of the Most High because you got a personal problem. That's wicked as hell, man. So I just wanted to put that out there, man, you know, and, and for all you niggas that are doing that, it goes into the scripture of, you know, woe to them that uh, that stumble because offenses must come, man. But woe to those that are, uh, that cause the offense is it will be better that a millstone cast about his neck and was thrown into the sea. So ultimately, like you're you're better off not existing, man, because you're you're uh, uh, you're a hassle, you're a problem. All right. So with that being said, I want to say call Lord to you, Abashi Miao Shai, Dabahan Sa apostles who are elders who rule well, bless the salutation to you, brothers out there teaching and enduring truth sincerity. Shalom.